Hi dears, welcome to Way to Success Frame. Today our topic is on Class 7th History from NCRT, that is the Mughal Empire. We will learn about growth and legacy of Mughal Empire in this lesson. Let's start. Who were the Mughals? The Mughals were descendants of two great lineages of rulers. From their mother's side, there were descendants of Genghis Khan. And from the father's side, there were the descendants of Taimur. Mughal Tradition of Succession The Mughals didn't believe in the rule of primogeniture, where the eldest son inherited his father's estate. They followed the custom of coparcenary inheritance or a division of the inheritance amongst all the sons. Babur was the founder of the Mughal Empire and the first emperor of the Mughal dynasty in the Indian subcontinent. He became the ruler of Delhi by defeating Ibrahim Lodi at Panipat in 1526. But he couldn't rule for a long time. After his death in 1530, his son Humayun became the second Mughal emperor. Shersha Suri defeated Humayun at Chausa and Kanauj, forcing him to flee to Iran. He recaptured Delhi in 1555 with the help of Safarid Shah, but died soon afterwards. Akbar succeeded his father Humayun. Akbar was 13 years old when he became emperor. During 1555 to 1570, he led military campaigns against Suris and other Afghan rebels. Akbar's policies Abul Fasal has discussed about Akbar's policies in his book Akbar Nama, particularly in his third volume Aini Akbar. In these books, he describes that the empire was divided into subas governed by a subedar who carried out military and administrative functions. Each province had a divan, military paymasters, minister for religion and charity, military commanders, and town policemen. In 1570, Akbar started religious discussions in the Ibadat Khanna at Fatehpur Sikri. He invited ulama, Brahmins, Catholic priests, and Zoroastrian priests. Akbar's interaction with people of different faiths made him realize that teachings of religious scholars created divisions and disharmony amongst his subjects. Akbar followed the policy of Sulhi Kul, means universal peace. The idea was not to discriminate people on the basis of their religious beliefs, but to an ethical system on the basis of honesty, justice and peace. The principle of Sulhi Kul was followed by Jahangir and Shah Jahan. Jahangir continued the campaigns started by his father Akbar and also won total control over the Sisodias. Jahangir's son Shah Jahan rebelled in the last years of his reign. His wife Noor Jahan played an important role in his administration. The efforts of Noor Jahan to marginalize him were unsuccessful. Mughal campaigns continued in the Deccan under Shah Jahan. Under his reign, the Mughal Empire reached the peak of cultural glory. He crushed rebellion of Afghan noble Khan Jahan Lodi. Aurangzeb was the sixth Mughal emperor who ruled over almost the entire Indian subcontinent for a period of 49 years. Prince Akbar rebelled against Aurangzeb and received support from the Marathas and the Deccan Sultanate. After Prince Akbar's rebellion, Aurangzeb sent armies against the Deccan Sultanates. He personally managed campaigns against Maratha from 1698. He also faced the rebellion in north of Six and in the northeast of the Ahoms. Mansabdars and Jagirdars The Mughals enrolled people of all races and religions into government jobs and they were known as Mansabdars. It was a grading system used by the Mughals to fix rank, salary and military responsibilities. 
The rank and salary were determined by a numerical value called Zat. They were required to maintain a specific number of cavalry men along with foot soldiers. They received salaries as revenue assignments known as Jagirs. Mughal relations with other rulers. Initially, Mughals campaigned against rulers who refused their authority. But as soon as they became powerful, several kings accepted their sovereignty. The Rajputs married their daughters into Mughal families to get high positions in the Mughal Empire. The careful balance between defeating but not humiliating their opponent enabled the Mughals to extend their influence over many kings and chieftains. Dears, let's stop this chapter now. I hope you understand this lesson. You can subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.